Hello everyone. In this video, we will see the guidelines to survey a large area. Surveying large areas present significant challenges in terms of battery life, overlap, covering all areas, drone range and safety. Most of the challenges can be dodged by careful and intelligent planning. The initial step is to create a KML of the site you want to map. Make sure that the boundary of the site is large enough so that you don't miss any area you are planning to map. With the help of Earth browsers such as Google Earth, you can study the area you want to map by inspecting the area. Make sure to confirm that there are no structures such as chimneys, tall trees, buildings, or any other construction that hinder the path of the drone. If the area is large enough and there are varied landscapes in your site, then you need to split the KML. While splitting the KML, make sure to have overlapping between adjacent KMLs. Also, you can find a safe and clear elevated area as your home position. And finally, you can plan where to keep the GCP points. Now, I will show you how to split the KML in Google Earth. Here, I am using the Google Earth Pro. Here, we can see that this is a mining terrain having a boundary of approximately 310 hectares. And here we can see that the left part of the terrain is having a lower elevation compared to the right part. There is an altitude difference of more than 100 meter. Therefore, we need to split the KML into two parts. Here I have splitted and kept the KML into two portions. Boundary 1 is having an area of 144 hectares and it is denoted by this white line. The boundary 2 having an area of 166 hectares and its boundary is denoted by the blue color. The maximum elevation in boundary 2 is 480 meter which you can see here on the map. The maximum elevation in boundary 1 is 365 meter. While splitting the KML, we always have to remember to keep at least 30 to 40 meter overlapping. Here, with the help of this ruler, we can check the overlapping distance. I have taken approximately 30 meter here. Next step is to find the home position. The home position of boundary 1 can be set at any safe and clear point whose elevation is above 345 meter since the highest elevation in this area is 365 meter and here i have set the home position at 354 meter make sure the home position is clear and is accessible by the road while marking the home position make sure that the boundary is within the drone range the drone range varies with different drones. Here I am taking the drone range as 1.5 km. And with the help of this ruler option, we can select circle here and change the option to kilometers. Next, we have to click on this home point 
and drag the circle around the boundary. Here we can see that the distance is only around 1.22 km. And the boundary is within the drone range. This is how we check if the boundary is within the drone range. Similarly, we can find it for boundary 2. The home position of boundary 2 can be set at any safe and clear point whose elevation is above 460 meter since the highest elevation in this area is 480 meter. Here I have set the home position at 465 meter. While marking the home position, make sure that the boundary is within the drone range. Now let us check if the boundary is falling within the drone range. Using the ruler option, we can click on the home point and then drag the circle around the boundary and the boundary is within the drone range. Here we can see that the distance is only around 1.26 km. Now the final step is to find the place where to mark the GCPs. Generally per square kilometer or 100 hectares, 4 to 5 GCPs are more than sufficient. And since here we have splitted the area to 144 and 166 hectares, I have taken 6 GCPs in each KML. And these are the GCP points that I have marked. You have to make sure that the GCP points are marked at clear and unobstructed locations. This is how we plan and split a large areas KML. Planning just the KML is not enough. We also need to be aware of other parameters that significantly affect the result while mapping large areas. Overlap matches the features between the photographs. There are two types of overlap, front overlap and side overlap. The overlap between successive photographs on a flight path is called the front overlap. Increasing the front overlap makes the camera capture more photos quickly. It only affects the number of images. The overlap between photographs in adjacent parallel flight paths is called the side overlap. Increasing the side overlap gives more matched features in the imagery, but reduces the area your drone can cover in one flight. Here we can see in the image the side overlap and the front overlap. Flying the drone at a higher altitude helps the camera cover more land area in a single image with fewer batteries and less time overall. Flying at low altitudes capture more details of the area. It also helps match common points while processing, increasing the image resolution and accuracy. GSD is the distance between the centers of two successive pixels on your map. 
measured in inches, centimeters, or millimeters. A drone can measure with a GSD of 5 cm per pixel, meaning that each pixel on your digital map represents 5 cm of actual space in a real world. Here in the image, we can see that this image is having a GSD of 10 cm per pixel, which makes a low resolution picture. And the bottom image is having GSD of 5 cm per pixel. And it has a better resolution compared to the top. The formula to calculate the GSD is there are two formulas, one to find the height and the other to find the width. The formula to calculate the GSD height is flight altitude into sensor height divided by focal length into image height. The formula to calculate the GSD width is flight altitude into sensor width divided by focal length into image width. The values I have used here is from my camera. You can find the parameters of your camera online and the height and width of the images can be found from the properties of any image you have taken with the camera. Here I have converted the values to centimeter and these are the height and width values I have obtained while solving the formula. There are many environmental challenges that can affect your drone survey. Plan and keep an extra day for mapping large area environmental factors such as precipitation, wind, etc. Avoid flying the drone in high wind speeds. And also, you can estimate the weather and wind using the wind and weather forecasting apps. The optimization of your battery life will differ depending on the type of drone you use. Mapping large areas require more than one battery to map the whole area. Make sure to carry extra batteries and plan efficiently to save battery life. If the area is large, then you need to make battery swaps. The drone returns to home when the battery gets low and you need to swap the battery and resume the mission. Then the drone flies to the position from which it triggered return to home and continue the mission. Technical errors like camera glitches, overexposed photos, etc. may arise while you are on the field. And it is always recommended to review the data you have collected while you are still on the site to make any necessary corrections. And also, you can use online tools to review the data. Now, let's have a quick recap. First, we discussed on KML file creation, followed by splitting the KML. And finally, discussing the parameters we need to check while you are on the field before flying. This brings us to the end of the video. If you are watching this video for the first time, please like and subscribe and we will be sharing more videos weekly. Click on the bell icon so that you won't miss any of the upcoming videos. And thank you for watching the video.